Hey. Holy, that eye trick there was actually a lot harder to do than it should have been. Give Goslin credit for doing that part of the end of this movie. Hey guys, this is my review for Drive, a movie that is one of my favorites, and I have never reviewed it. The movie is seven years old now, which is crazy to think about it, because this was a big movie to talk about when it came out in the summer of 2011. There was a lot of decisive conflicts about it. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. I understand why people don't like it. I can understand that. It's not an everyday film. Also, the marketing for the film was a lie. The trailer showed it as an action-oriented film. There was even that woman who did the lawsuit about it because it wasn't like a Fast and the Furious movie. What Drive is, is an art house film with a amazing visual style and against the norm form of character development and a pretty basic story that has fantastic character turns and a great film soundtrack. There's a reason why Gosling's been on the wall for as long as he's been. He's been in other places around the wall, but Gosling right here is one of my first ever posters that I got from Redbubble and I really enjoy this movie. Everything from how the film starts to the final shot of the film is all a very, very well-connected film. The film is about Ryan Gosling's character, technically Driver, because you never know what his name is in the movie, and he is a stuntman by day, but he also does getaway jobs for night on the side. Then he meets this girl who has a son, and they start to form this relationship and he kind of moves into the stepdad role. But then it turns out that she actually was married and that her husband comes back from prison. And then there's this kind of interesting connection between the two, especially when the husband is forced to do a job because of the people who protected him in prison. And because the driver doesn't want the family to get hurt, he helps out, things go wrong, and people start to die. This is one of my favorite roles that Gosling's ever done. His character has this mysterious edge to it. He has this dark and non-personal sort of side to him. But when he meets Karen, he starts to kind of develop these emotional feelings and all the interactions between the two are almost like that of school kids kind of finding first love and that's what's so interesting about him is that he has this dark past you know he has these violent tendencies he is a violent person he is the scorpion on his back and he continues to bring people in inadvertently knowing that he's actually damaging them and himself and that's why the scorpion does it on the other side of the table there's albert brooks who is a fantastic villain in this film if you would call him that his character is definitely a reasonable villain he is a person that doesn't want to do what he's doing but he has to because of the circumstances that he's put in and it's a mirror of what gosling's character is doing there's also some really cool actors in this film too karen melligan obviously oscar isaac ron perlman is a big dick. He's really funny in this movie. Uh, Christina Hendricks. You can see that there was a good relationship between the director and Ryan Gosling, the director being Nicholas Winding Refn, who went on to make nothing really of in interest to me afterwards, admittedly. Only God Forgives is just a giant schlock of what the actual hell is going on in pompousness. And I haven't seen The Neon Demon that I haven't really had any want to. But Nicholas, I think, does everything right in this movie. The beginning of the film, taking place all inside the car, creates a realm of reality, and it pulls you into the film to make you feel like you're literally in the car during this chase sequence. It's a very simple sequence, because all of it is shot inside the car. And it's such a refreshing turn from all the over exposure and ridiculousness that's in the Fast and the Furious movies to see a really grounded car chase and the beginning of the film and kind of near the middle, it's a satisfying thing. Admittedly, there is some editing mishaps, particularly in that driving sequence in the, in the kind of in the middle of the film. There's two really bad, really bad goofs 
um, one time a car passes by and it totally changes when it cuts to behind the car and uh, the car accident is not really well edited either. But those are my only complaints about the film. Gosling's character is a fantastic portrayal, a very dark and mysterious character. His relationship with Carrie Mulligan is really good in the film. The soundtrack, like I said, is super, super good. I was listening to the soundtrack for this film for months on end afterwards and even though my girlfriend does not like this movie at all, she does like A Real Hero by College, and it's a great song, and it plays into the story so well, right at the very end, when he's sitting there in that car and he doesn't blink for what feels like a minute, and the whole time you're wondering, is he alive, is he dead, and it's just a great way to end the movie, it kind of gives you this thought of what actually does happen to it. I understand why people don't like this movie, because admittedly it's not for everyone. The lack of dialogue is somewhat jarring to some. I have had friends watch it who don't like it, but the friends who do kind of see the point that it's not a vocal film, it's showing without telling, it's a visual storytelling. And you see that on their interactions, on in their faces, and that's why I feel the movie's so good. It's a refreshing change from what we're so used to. And admittedly, they haven't really made anything like this in this sense. Like, they've done it a lot of horror movies, oh, oddly enough, in the, the recent while, which is cool. But I would like to see another movie like Drive, because I really enjoyed this film. And I also have, like, a pretty sweet... Uh, steel box of it. Both my brother and I have this. We both love this movie. So I literally love this box art. What's funny enough is this was refreshing because the two cases, the two Blu-ray DVDs that came out, both American and Canadian, were terrible. Like the worst Photoshop jobs you could ever imagine. Like just bad. But in the end, what is my rating for Drive? It's a 7 out of 7 for me. It's one of my favorite movies. I think that this movie did set a place mark for itself in terms of its film style and just the way that the film interacts with the characters and with the events that happen. And what's funny enough is at the time the director didn't have a driver's license. So it's kind of interesting that he makes a movie about a driver when he can't drive himself. So. But again, as I said, I understand why people don't like this movie. There are some spots that are just different from what is the norm, and it is art housey. And I'm usually not a fan of art house films because I find that they go too pretentious, but this one I feel is just right in everything that it does. If you've never seen Chris Stuckman's analysis of this film, it's a fantastic analysis of it. Everything that I've missed, he covers in great detail. I'll admit that Stockman and I don't agree on much anymore, it seems, but if you want to see a really good video essay about the film, I would definitely suggest it. I'll put it in the uh, link it somewhere in this video. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this review. It's a little bit of a random thing, but I thought I'd talk about it. If you liked the video, leave a like, and if you're interested, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.